for your leadership, Dr. Davidson. Now, while we remain focused on making our law enforcement better, we cannot lose sight of their mandate. A dramatic spike in violent crime has damaged our city's sense of safety. We're going to continue to hire more police officers to keep our neighborhoods safe. Recently, through a data-driven, precision approach, DPD has re reduced violent crime in four of the five areas where it had been occurring most often. And they're now expanding this model to other hotspots. What remains concerning is the prevalence of guns on our streets. DPD took nearly 2,100 guns off our streets last year. I want that to sink in with you. And more than 1,200 guns so far this year. We're being held hostage by those who believe unrestrained access to guns is a good thing. The solution to gun violence isn't more guns. That's why we ban concealed carry in our parks and city buildings. It's why we ban ghost guns. It's also why I'm asking city council to fund a new partnership with the U.S. attorney to prosecute violent felons found with guns in violation of federal law. We're going to bring greater resources to bear to prosecute individuals under harsher federal laws to, co to combat gun violence in our city. Thank you, Co Finnegan and the U.S. attorney's office. So if you are a felon in possession of a gun in our city, beware. We will leverage those federal laws to prosecute you. We know other communities in the metro area are acting as well. Congress, after so many tragedies, has finally passed legislation. <clears throat> has finally passed legislation. <laughs> Listen. It's a good step. It's a good first step. But I know we agree it's not far enough. There's no reason why weapons of war should be available for sale in this country. No one should be able to buy a weapon that can be used to slaughter a classroom full of children, a grocery store full of people, or those attending a 4th of July parade. I urge Congress to reinstate the assault weapons ban post-state. Now, we must be honest about how drugs, particularly fentanyl, has also impacted our community. As I sat with families and listened to their stories of how their loved ones were taken by this poison, the reality of the situation was never clearer. Just since 2019, annual fentanyl deaths have quadrupled in Denver. It's devastating families. Hell, it's de devastating our community. New state legislation will help us hold drug dealers more accountable and provide more support for those suffering from addiction. Speaker Alec Garnett, I see you. Thank you for your courageous leadership. <laughs> While not perfect, this law gives police and prosecutors additional tools to help disrupt the distribution of a poison that is killing more Denver residents than homicides and car crashes combined. We have to do more and we have to sound the alarm in our community. Over the next two years, Denver will receive its first $8 million from the National Opiate Settlement. I want you to know I am committed to seeing these dollars directed towards supporting service providers and improving capacity at treatment programs. Our public health officials are also preparing to help expand services, including counseling and medicated assisted treatment. We're working to ensure a full continuum of care for people experiencing addiction, including covering costs of services when personal finances and insurance fall short, and expanding our mobile response teams to meet people where they are. The Sheriff's Department has begun a new medicated assisted treatment unit to provide addiction services for those in their care. And when someone is released, they aren't released without support. They're released with Narcan, test strips, and treatment contacts. Last month, Denver hosted a statewide fentanyl summit focused on law enforcement and criminal justice. Later this fall, 
we will be hosting a second summit focused on public health, the public health side of this crisis. Through treatment, harm reduction, and support, we can help those struggling with addiction get on and stay on the road to recovery. We don't have a choice. Failure is not an option. Finally, we must never stop investing in our children. The former late, great Denver District Attorney, Norm Early, used to say, I'd rather build up a child than repair an adult. Norm understood the value and importance of early childhood investment. Since 2011, voters expanded the Denver Preschool Program and established the Prosperity Denver Fund, assisting every child who wants to attend a college attain their dream. We opened our recreation centers to every child in Denver through the My Denver card. When we became mayor, there were 874 kids who were members of the rec program. Today, every child in Denver is a member of our rec program. We fed thousands of children through an after-school meals program. They come into our rec centers, we're feeding them. Made record investments in summer youth employment programs. Initiated the free summer RTD ride pass for youth, and we joined President Obama's My Brother's Keeper Mentorship Program. Our Youth Empowerment Center, providing our kids um, a safe, positive environment, is now open. But we won't stop at this, just this one. I'm proud to announce today that by 2024, Denver will have four additional youth empowerment centers around the city. Our rec centers and after school programs were safe havens for me and my siblings growing up, just like they are for so many kids in our city today. Denver Public Schools has the responsibility of supporting Denver's kids while they're in the classroom. Our responsibility is on the other side of that school door. We all need to be there for every child. We must remain committed to the compact with DPS so every child has everything they need to thrive. Justice for our children is a future full of possibilities. You know, the pursuit of justice is a noble one. And it has defined who we are as a city and as a community. Real progress is never settling for a city separated by haves and have nots. Everyone who calls our great city home deserves a fair shot and a fair opportunity at success and an affordable home. To enjoy clean air and clean water. To have a career that supports them and their family to express themselves to the fullest. There is a bright future ahead. When we welcomed the All-Star Game last July, it was time to collectively see the light at the end of the COVID tunnel. When hundreds of thousands of us showed up in our burgundy and blue to celebrate the Avs, we experienced firsthand the power of unity over divisions. And next April, when we host the inaugural Cities Summit of the Americas, we will demonstrate the ability of cities like ours to power progress. As an administration accountable to the people we serve, we remain committed to justice. We remain committed to leaving this city better than we found it. And while this may be my final year as mayor, I pledge to you that I will bring the same energy, creativity, and intention as if it were my first. A city, thank you. A city is a constant work in progress. We build on the progress that came before us. We change, we reinvent, we try new things, and that work is never done. A year from now, I will hand these duties on to the next mayor. Every day until then is a new opportunity to improve the lives of every Denver resident. I remain steadfast 
in that commitment. Our work is not done. We will not waver. And so, it's time to get back to work. Thank you. God bless you. God bless the city and county of Denver. Thank you, Mayor Hancock. Denver and her residents are forever indebted to you, to your administration, to the city agencies, and to the city employees who, in the very early days of the pandemic, we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know where we were going, what was happening. And your leadership, your style really came through during that time. And I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, because so many of the things that you talked about today in your last State of the City address are things that you have been working on for years and decades through your service as the District 11 Councilman way back when. and. I'm very honored to be serving in this role today. And we have to thank you once again, sir, because your, your personality, your lightheartedness, even in the face of unknown, carried us through. And so this city and Denver and her residents, thank you, sir. Now, I'm going to invite Major Mike Dickinson, Divisional Commander for the Salvation Army, to share the first benediction. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, at the conclusion of this ceremony, we pause to give you thanks. We thank you for our mayor, Michael B. Hancock. We thank you for the members of our city council and for the leaders at every level in our city. We ask, oh God, for your continued guidance and wisdom over all of our leaders in every decision that is made. We pray, God, that the city of Denver would continue to flourish for generations to come. We ask, O oh God, for your justice, for your love, and for your grace to guide us and to define us. We thank you for the people of this city who make up our beautiful community that each of us call home. We ask for your continued strength, for your peace, for your protection upon the city of Denver and everyone in it. May our city, its leaders, and each citizen be guided according to your word. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift his countenance upon us and give us peace both now and forevermore. These things I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Major Dickinson, for your inspiring words. For our closing benediction, please welcome Pastor Angelica Rodriguez from El Renuevo Christian Center. Well, good day to everyone. Good day to Denver. And what an amazing time we have shared today. Why don't you join me praying one more time for our city? And let's join together and pray, dear Heavenly Father. As we gather here today, we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, and it all manifested in our city. 
We celebrate our triumph and success knowing that all good things come from you. We acknowledge our need for your presence, for your light, and for your power as we face the challenges of tomorrow. We pray for our mayor, Michael B. Hancock, and all of our elected city officials. We thank you for their heart of service, and we pray that you may continue to guide them, that they may continue to lead your city with wisdom, and their counsel would bring safety and victory. We pray for our people, like scripture says in Proverbs 11:11, 11, 11, through the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, and good people bring prosperity to their city. May your blessing rest upon our citizens. May your peace and welfare make our people prosper. And may Denver continue to be the valley of green pastures for the people. We pray everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Rodriguez, for your uplifting words. In closing, I'd like to thank John Martinez, Keith Bell, Keambria Hunter, and the amazing staff at the Montbello Recreation Center for hosting us this morning. We ask that everyone remain seated while the procession exits the stage. Then we'd like to invite you all to exit through the double doors to the back and out into the park for a celebration and some refreshments. You can also reach the parking lot. Please have a wonderful day, stay cool out there, and Denver's a great place, so let's celebrate it today. Thank you. Thank you.